Hey, good afternoon, people. It's Mr. Shua coming back at you one more time just to give you an update on the SOL. So, I've been proctoring the SOL for the last couple of days, and I noticed that some students come out of the testing room ecstatic, yay, yay, while some other students are coming out defeated like the world just caved in on them. So I just started asking kids, uh, you know, how is it that you thought the SOL was? Some, of, some kids said, man, the SOL was easy. Other kids were like, it was hard. So I wanted to figure out uh, why do some kids find it easy while other kids find it difficult. And what I've come to find out is that the kids who found the SOL easy are the ones who take advantage of all their resources. And by that, I mean using the apps on the calculator that they are allowed to use. Now, if you don't know, I guess I'm going to fill you in on something, but I guess some of you already know that you can use a graphing calculator on the SOL. Here, I pulled this off of the Virginia Department of Education website, which is uh, all of the calculators which are approved to be used on the SOL, State Approved Calculators for Standards on Learning Testing Guidelines of Preparation Instruction. So if you notice here, if I go down to Algebra 1, Geometry and Algebra 2. Let me just skip this out of the way here. Algebra 1, Geometry and Algebra 2, allowed, 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 which is for graphing calculator. So, well, you all know that you can use a graphing calculator. And more than likely, the graphing calculator you're using is TI 83 or 84. So let's go down and look what it says for TI 84. 83 and 84. Okay, here we are. Now, TI 83 plus series, TI 84 plus, or TI inspire in TI 84 plus mode. Now, I think all of you know that uh, you reset all the memory and your teachers are probably already doing that for you. But let's take a look at option two here. It says prior to SOL testing, reset all the RAM, which pretty much most teachers are doing, and delete all apps except the following. So there are one, two, three, four apps, which they say to leave on the calculator. And the finance app, but you're not going to use the finance app on the SOL. In equality graphing, you may use that kind of graphing app. But this app, the Polynomial Root Finder and Simultaneous Equation Solver app, it says do not delete it off of the TI-83 or 84. This is a super app that you can use during SOL to help you out. Let me show you how it works, okay? So... On the calculator that you get from the school, once you turn it on, if you hit this pink apps button here, you should have polysimult here, polysmelt2, whatever. That is the polynomial root finder and simultaneous equation solver app. Now, let me show you what you can do. Well, first, let me minimize this here. No, matter of fact, let me uh, just pull up something here. Let me, I don't want that one just yet. Let me look at this one. Matter of fact, let me go back a few. Ooh. Here, this is a good one. Okay. So I'm taking this from the 2014, I think, uh, SOL released. Anyway, so with this polysmelt app here, here's one, which is a factor of 2n squared minus 5n minus 42. So it's basically asking you to factor, right? Okay, with option two, polysmelt, I go here. Polynomial Root Finder and Simultaneous Equation Solver. Press any key. Okay, so we want Polynomial Root Finder. 
Why? Because polynomial root finder pretty much kind of does, it finds the roots for us, which makes it easy to factor. Okay, so I'm going to hit polynomial root finder. The order is two real numbers, and I want fractions to appear. I hit next. Now, A1, I'm going to hit this first term, A of 2. Second term, A of 1 is going to be a negative 5. Negative 5. The third term is negative 42. Negative 42. So basically, what I'm asking the calculator to do is factor 2n squared minus 5n minus 42. You see this button over here that says solve? When I hit solve, it gives me a 6 and a negative 7 halves. Those are the roots. Now, if you remember from algebra class, if this is a 6, well, then that means an x minus 6 would be the factor. Here, the factor would be 2x plus 7. So we either look for a 2x plus 7 or an x minus 6. Uh, here, x minus 6. There's your answer. So that polynomial root finder can help you answer a lot of, now, mind you, this only works on multiple choice questions. It does not work on any of the fill in the blank or type your answer in. But if it's a multiple choice question, you can use this app to help you find the answer. Make sense? Okay, now, let me quit out of here. Let me go to main. I want to show you how you could use the simultaneous equation solver. And let me pick another question. This one is perfect. Okay, let me show you how you can use simultaneous equation. It says, what is solution to this system of equations? The simultaneous equation solver is designed to help you answer system of equation problems. Let me show you how you can do it. Now, number two, simultaneous equation solver. Yep, two equations, two unknowns. Well, I'm going to leave all those settings. Now I'm going to hit next. Okay, so this says 2x plus 4y equals 22. So I'm going to hit 2 for my x, 4 for my y, 22 there. This says 7x, so 7 for my x, 1y, 12. Okay. So I enter both equations in, then over here it says solve. Hit solve. X is 1, Y is 5. 1 and 5. Boom. That's it. And we can just test it. So 2 times 1 is 2. 4 times 5 is 22. That works. 7 times 1 is 7, plus 5 is 12. There you go. Okay, so again... Let me go back to the main here. The polynomial root finder and the simultaneous equation solver can definitely help you. Answer, again, the multiple choice questions. This is not going to help you on any fill in the blank or any drag and drop questions. Okay? Now, there's one other calculator, and I'm going to quit this app. One other calculator trick I want to show you guys here that you are allowed to use on the SOL. Okay, let's look at this one. This is for Algebra 2, guys, but you can use it for Algebra 1, 2 if you have a similar question. Okay, which expression is equivalent to 3n over n plus 3 plus 5 over n minus 4 if no denominator equals 0? Now, using the store function on your calculator can help you solve this. Now, this is how you use it. I'm going to choose some value for n or x or whatever. Some value, as long as it's not 0 or 1. You can choose 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, seven, whatever. I'm going to choose 2. I'm going to hit 2. I'm going to hit store. And then I'm going to hit x. Then I'm going to hit enter. So now, anytime I punch in an x, the calculator is automatically going to think the number 2. Now, here's where the magic happens. I'm going to plug in this right here. So I'm going to place a fraction, alpha, y1, oops, let me clear that, get out of that. 
go back alpha y equals one I want to get a fraction so I'm gonna type 3 X over X plus 3 get out of that plus put in another fraction alpha y equals 1 5 over x minus 4 now when I hit enter I get this fraction and this fraction says negative 13 over 10 so that's the value the calculator came up with now all I need to do is punch in each one of these and see which one gives me a matching value of negative 13 over 10 and that's my answer let's start with the first one here I'm gonna put in another fraction okay so 3 x squared minus 7 x plus 3 over x plus 3 x minus 4 I hit enter okay that's a different fraction yeah that one gave me a negative 1 10 so that's not it so let me go on to the second one put that in so 3 x squared minus 7x plus 15 over x plus 3 x minus 4 over the 4 in there all right and that one gave me negative 13 over 10 which matches choice b is your answer again please note this only works for the multiple choice questions it will not work for you on a type your answer fill in the blank or a drag and drop tei item okay so hopefully you can use these tips that I've shown you here to help you pass the SOL okay you don't have to be afraid of it every one of you should pass good luck see you later oh okay one more thing before I go I didn't tell you how to use the store function when you have more than one variable let's look at this particular question here where it says this is an algebra 2 question but I guess you might have it in algebra 1 as well which expression is equivalent to the fourth root of 16 x to the 15th y to the 17th where x is greater than 0 and y is greater than 0 so here I have an x and a y I need to store for two values so what I would do I'm gonna store for the x first so I'm gonna go to store x enter so 2 is my value for the x now this is how I would store for the y I'm just gonna make it 3 just to make it different and again remember you use any number except 0 or 1 okay so if I go 3 store when I want to store for the y I hit the alpha key and the number 1 that gives me a y enter so right now on my calculator I have the value of 2 stored for X the value of 3 stored for Y okay now let me enter in this expression here fourth root the fourth root of 16 X to the 15th I hit alpha 1 for oops let me delete that come back down there I hit alpha 1 for y to the 17th I get this decimal number so then I try each one of these four here 
and see which one matches that decimal number. So let me try the first one. 4x to the 11th alpha 1 for y to the 13th. Okay, that's a tiny different decimal number. That's it. Just to save time, I'm going to go to the one we said. D is the answer, but let me show you. 2x up to the 15 divided by 4. Come down. Alpha 1 for y. Carry it up to the 17 divided by 4. And we see the decimal matches. So again, you can use the store feature for more than one variable. If it had a Z as well, then pick a third number and then punch in, you know, for the Z as well. Okay, so now between all of these calculated trips, plus knowing what you know from my previous videos, you should all pass or pass advanced to SOL. Take care, everybody. See you later.